recorded just to let you know. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for hosting that. That was fantastic. Oh, good. How are you, Saul? I'm going to tell a story about a spalpeen. And for anybody not from Ireland who's listening in, a spalpeen was a term that we used for an itinerant agricultural worker. And they walked the roads with a spade over their shoulder and they stopped in communities and they would work for a farm for two days or three days or a week or a harvest. And they were treated quite badly. They were paid very badly. Their, their quarters were very poor. Their food wasn't good, but not our spalpeen. He was fortunate and he felt very lucky because his master was a kind and generous man. He paid him well. He looked after him. He didn't work him too hard. And the spalpeen was happy. And this day he was out working in the fields, and his master came walking in carrying a potato. And when I say a potato, he was barely able to carry it. It was bigger than his two arms could go around. And he's carrying it in and he's calling him over, Here, fella, come here. What do you think of that for a potato? And the spalpeen looked at it and he said, Oh, that's a beautiful potato. That is a gorgeous spud. Look at it. It's as clean and white inside and beautiful eyes on it. But I've seen bigger. And the farmer says, you have? When did you see bigger? And he says, well, my father grew a field of spuds one time. He says, and they grew that, they grew that well and the, the harvest came around and the night before the harvest happened, a sweet smell came in the air and the whole field of spuds was rotten in the ground. And my father took us out and in a fit of temper, we pulled the spuds and we threw them out into the back, into the lime kiln. And we forgot about them. But in the spring of the year, my father was out in the lime kiln and there must have been one good potato went into the pit. And on the manure caused by the other rotten potatoes, it had grown to gargantuan proportions. It was a gigantic spud. He says, the only way we could get that out of there, we got neighbours to come around, four of them with charts, and he says, with ropes and pulleys, we got it lifted out in about half a day. He says, four men took turns cutting it in half with a big cross-cut saw. He says, after a couple of days, we got it cut into four pieces. He says, it was put away for the winter. He says, we ate that potato for the rest of that year. And the farmer said, all right, okay, fair enough. And he went on with his work. And a day later, the farmer didn't want to be outdone, so he came walking around again. The spalpeen was digging the spuds and he called him over and then the farmer's arms was a cabbage. I mean, this thing was enormous. The farmer's knees were buckling under the weight of it. And he says to him, here, did you ever see a cabbage that good in your life? And the spalpeen says, that's a lovely cabbage. Oh, look at it. There's a big stalk on it as thick as my arm. But I've seen bigger. And the farmer says, you have? When did you see bigger? He says, oh, one time my father grew a crop of cabbages. He says, they were that big and that fresh and that healthy. He says, a full-grown cow could shelter in below the leaf of a single cabbage. And he says, and then one day it come on a terrible storm of rain. And he says, the cabbage leaf above the cow filled up and filled up the water until eventually the leaf gave way. The cow was washed down the field, through the hedge, down the next field and into the river. We never saw that cow again. And the farmer smiled and he said, okay, all right. And he was beginning to figure out the kind of boy he was dealing with. The third day, the farmer came round, this time over his shoulder, like a great railway sleeper. He's carrying a great big block of cheese. And he calls the spalpeen and he says, come here, what do you think of this for a bit of cheese? And the spalpeen looked at it and he said, oh, that's gorgeous. Look at the holes all the way through it. Oh, that's a beautiful piece of cheese. But I've seen bigger. And the farmer said, go on. And he says, well, one time, he says, my father had such a good crop of grass. He says, we fed our cattle day and night they grazed. And he says, we produced that much milk. We hadn't even enough buckets in the farm to get rid of the milk. And he says, my father sent a few men out into the back meadow and they dug a big hole. It was like a swimming pool. And we just carted buckets after buckets and we filled this up and filled it up and filled it up. It was a lake, a lake of milk. He says, but at that time, we had a young newborn foal on the farm. It was very curious, we think. And it went up too close to the edge, and it fell into the milk. 
You know, we never saw that again. He says, women came in and they churned all up to the chest they were in milk and they churned for days and days. And he says, they produced that much cheese. It was nearly the beating of us to get it out and get it put in storage. But we managed. We ate that cheese, he says, all winter. Then in the spring of the year, he says, my father went out and he cut a big lump out of the cheese. Do you know what walked out of it? Only a full-grown horse. And the farmer said, here, you know you, you can tell a story. I could do with a fellow like you tomorrow. They're going to hang my brother. And he's innocent. And I could do with you to speak up to the judge for him. Would you do it? And the Spalteen scratched his head and he said, oh, I don't know, I'm very busy here with the spud. And the farmer said, I'll make it worth your while. And the Spalteen said, okay. So off the two of them the next morning went to the court. And out the front of the courthouse, there was a gallows bell, draped around with black cloth and a rope hanging, blowing in the wind. The judge came out and they brought the prisoner and they were about to put the rope around his neck and the Spalteen spoke up. And he said, Your Honor, you're about to hang an innocent man. And the judge said, Really? How do you how do you make that out? And he said, Well, I can prove it, but I'll have to tell you a story in order to do so. And Your Honor, furthermore, there is a person in the crowd who will accuse me of being a liar, and I can tell you here and now that that's your guilty party. And the judge said, Continue. And the Spalpine said, Well, my father passed away a couple of years ago and he left the farm. To me and the two brothers he says we got about eight acres each and i looked at my wee bit of land and i thought i'm going to make a go of this and i bought myself a grand big white horse for pulling the plow and i went away to plant oats but when i got to the store i was powerful short on oats and i decided i would have to go to england and buy some so i took the old horse and got on her back and i walked her down to the water's edge you know she just walked out into the sea and started swimming and she swam all that day and the next and the next and after three days and nights we arrived on the shores of england she walked me straight up the beach and into a market town and i was able to buy eight great big bags of oats and i put them on the horse's back and i climbed on top of the pile and i headed her back to the water three days and nights again she swam and she brought me home just down below our farm but dear i think that broke the old horse's back because when she made shore she just collapsed in a heap. He says, I looked around to see was there anything I could do to help her. But the only thing I could see was an old holly tree. And I broke a branch off it. And I just shoved it into the old horse. And you know, she stood up as right as rain. It just behaved as if it was a new spine. And I took the oats off her back. And I just thought she's done her job. I'm going to let her go and find her peace. And she wandered off into the woods. And I took the oats up and I sowed them. And I waited all summer for the harvest. And I had a great field of oats. I went to reap it, but I didn't want to trouble the horse. So I went out with a bell hook, and I just started up one drill with a bell hook, but it was very slow work. And after about an hour, I'd only gone about half a rig when suddenly a big hare rose up in front of me. Well, I thought, here's supper tonight, boys. And I threw the bell hook at the hare for all I was fit. But whatever way the thing span in the air, the blade didn't strike the animal, but the handle did, and it went straight into their side. And the hare took off up the rig and me after it. She got to the top of the field and she turned and she ran down the next rig. And me after it and the sweat blinded me. And I got to the bottom and she turned up again and we went up the field and down the field and up the field. And do you know after about 20 minutes I looked up and the hare only reaped the entire field of oats for me? Well, I was a lucky man, but I had no way of getting the oats into the house. So I went into the woods looking for the old horse. And do you know she was there. She looked as fresh and healthy and well as a newborn foal. And I took her and I brought her out. But do you know what was growing straight up out of her back? Only a big holly tree. Well, I climbed up onto the back of the horse. Now, as he was telling the story, the people in the crowd aren't stupid. Country folk know when to hold their tongue. And they had heard the reminder that somebody that accused them of being a liar would be the guilty party. So they had been nodding and agreeing the whole way through. Oh, right, that's a very possible thing. Oh, that's the kind of thing that happens here all the time. And they were all going along with it. But there was a fisherman in the crowd, and he just couldn't stand the lies any longer. And as the spalpine went on, he said, I climbed onto the back of the horse, and I went up into the tree, and I went to the top branch, and that's when I found it, Your Honour. And the judge said, what did you find? He says, I found a fine, fat, pink salmon, fast asleep in its nest. 
And at that, the fisherman in the crowd had had enough, and he stood up and he shouted, You're a liar! And the spalpeen said to the judge, Your honour, I rest my case. And they took the fisherman from the crowd, and they hanged him, and they freed the farmer's brother. And I don't know what happened to them people after that. That's my story. Well, God, yeah.